So after my last video you may wonder, so that's all internal Anton, so what are the external cards that you can recommend for 2020? Well, let's find out in this video. Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's hardware channel. Now today we're going to talk about external sound cards and which one you should ask for Santa this year. But first I wanted to do a little bit of a service announcement and that is, well, I got myself a new job, a new full-time job, which means that, well, I do not have enough time to create that much content. And I have been uploading for the last, well, a couple of months, once a week, once every two weeks, and now I see that I well I just do not have the time to spend with my family and have a full-time job and also create uh, quality content, um, if I may call it quality. But still, here I am because well I enjoy this too much. And today we're going to talk about these three, four, sorry, these four. And first off, it's the uh, this is the Fossi Q5. We have the FX Audio X6. We have the GSX 300 from Epo Sennheiser and the Vio E10K. These are all about 70, 60, 70 euros on Amazon. So they're about equally priced. And I was wondering which of these are is really good and which one should you ask for Santa this year? So externally, well, what do these sound cards or external sound cards look like? But first I wanted to switch over to the boxes themselves because uh, the names are really Chinese inventive names. I mean, if you have a box that says your music dream made by the Shenzhen Fly Dream Digital Technology Corporation, I mean, that's pure poetry. And what about the Fossi, the digital, sorry, professional digital audio, create outstanding sound and transmit nature music. Well, there, you cannot go wrong with those names. But still, what do they look outside? Well, both the Fossi and the FX Audio are very similar. The layout is the same and the back is nearly identical. Also, the shapes and the sizes are, well, identical. The difference is that the Fossi supports up to 3.5 and 6,35 mm jack plugs, whereas the FX only Audio only supports the 6,35 mm. Both use an external power supply, which is 12 volts, and the inputs can be USB, optical, and coax. Now, the feel is tiny, and when I say tiny, I mean really tiny. It accepts a 3.5 mm jack plug, and it has a volume bob knob in the front and a bass boost on and off, but a little more on this later on. It accepts only a USB input, the output is coax and three and a half millimeters and it has a low and high gain. Now the EPOS is a bit bigger than the Vio and it only has a USB connector, of course also a volume knob and it has a headphone in and a sorry headphone out and a microphone in. So that's what all the digital to analog converters or external sound cards look like externally. But what about internally? Well, the FX Audio has the CS4398 digital to analog converter. It uses the TPA6102 amplifier. It has a reported signal to noise ratio of 105 decibels. It can has an output power of 910 milliwatts. A headphone can be driven up to 600 ohms. The power consumption, which is something I measured by myself, was about two watts and the external power supply used is 12 volts. Now the Fossi Q5 has exactly the same digital to analog converter and exactly the same amplifier. And that's something that's really interesting because these two share the same components as the Creative Sound Blaster Z, the Creative G5, the Asus Xoner DX, the Asus Xoner Essence ST, the Asus Xoner Phoebe Solo, and the Asus or Straight Rigs Pro. So the components are widely used and aren't that anything special. What is different? with the FX Audio and the Fossi, of course, is that the reported signal to noise ratio is 110 decibels. The output power is 400 milliwatts. 
and the headphone can, that can be driven is 250 ohms. The power consumption is twice as much as the FX Audio at 3.8 watts and the power supply is also 12 volts. Now if we switch over to the Vio E10K, well uh, E10K2, sorry, it uses the PCM5102 digital to analog converter the LMH6643 amplifier. Now these two are something completely different. I haven't, well, seen them anywhere else and they haven't been used in any of my previous tests. So I was, I was kind of anxious to see what they sounded like. The reported signal to noise ratio is 108 decibels. The output power is 200 milliwatts. It can drive a headphone up to 150 ohms. It doesn't use a power it doesn't have any power consumption because it's USB power and thus doesn't have an external power supply. And now for the EPL EPOS GSX 300. Well, that was something interesting because I tried to figure out what the digital to analog converter was, what the amplifier was, well, everything else, but I just couldn't find any decent information about it. The only thing that I could find out was that it can drive a headphone up to 75 ohms and that's about it. So the listening sessions, how do these sound cards sound? Well, first up it's, well, let's pick this one. It's the Sennheiser EPOS GSX 300. You know, I thought that the sound quality of this one is really good. I mean, the bases were there, the highs were there. In the middle, it's all nice. It's not too sharp or too um, misformed or whatever. It's just nice quality sound. It's oomphy, it's there. You do not need a bass boost or anything. It's just nice quality sound. Now, I have done a video about this external sound card before. And in that video, I said that Epos Sennheiser was releasing an update for this external sound card which also added resolution to the 7.1 of 24 bits and 96 kilohertz. At this moment with this firmware, it's just 16, 16 bits and uh, what was it? 48 kilohertz, I have to remember which one it was. So that's really low and it does sound like it's really low. If you switch to 7.1, it switches over to just 16 bits and the quality is well, uh, horrible. If you stick to the 2.0, it's really good. In my opinion, 7.1 is always simulated and it doesn't have any point to it at all. It's just adding a lot of reverb and I don't see the point in that. So I never use it. So this one is a nice quality sound card, sound wise. Now this one was the surprise for me and it's the Fio E10K. It's a tiny, I mean, if you compare it, to, this one is already tiny, the GSX 300. This one is even smaller and well, I thought, well, it's small, so it must sound horrible, but in fact, it sounded rather nice. Uh, the quality, it was, it was as if this, the, the sound card wanted to tell you, well, I have everything under control. I mean, the quality is nice. Uh, the bass wasn't so oomphy. It was uh, somewhat lacking, but still there was some bass. I mean, it does have the bass boost, but I'm going to tell you that a bit more about that when I do the right mark audio analyzer tests. The sound quality of this one is really nice. Highs were there, middle was there. I thought it was just a really well-defined sound card. Let's keep an eye out on this one. And then we have the, well, I don't know what to call them, brother and sister. I mean, the Fossey and the FX Audio, well, they look identical. And on the inside, as I have shown, they are identical. And that's also when I did the sound test. I mean, the sound quality of both of them is rather nice. It's not that good. It's on the lower part of uh, when you compare it to the other two. Um, but they sounded very similar, even so much similar that I asked my wife to switch the digital analog converters and ask me which one I heard and if I heard any differences at all. And to be honest, I didn't hear any differences. I mean, they sounded identical to each other. So if you want to compare these two, it has to be the comparison of the two. Well, what do they have to offer? The extra options. That's it for the listening sessions. Let over, let's head over to the Widemark Audio Analyzer results. So what about those Rightmark Audio Analyzer results? Well, all cards have reasonably good frequency responses, although the GSX300 has its cutoff point way beyond 40 kHz, which is nice to see. 
the FX Audio has the worst score with the purple line, starting its drop off at 10 colors, which means that in everyday usage that the highs may seem a bit damned. Both the Fossi and the Fio have a really nice straight and flat line, well that many internal sound cards may be jealous of. When we look at the dynamic range we see that the FX Audio has the best score, followed by the Epos, then the Fossi and then the Fio. In the uh, total harmonic distortion department it's the Epos with the best numbers, followed by the Fio and both the Fossi and the FX Audio finish last. So the results overall are rather impressive. Now I wanted to share something else with you and that is what happens when you enable the bass boost on the Fio and that's what this graph shows. The green line shows the normal regular output and the white line the bass boost enabled. And with this graph it shows why this function is like kryptonite for an audio lover because all the highs will be dampened and the bass will be overpowered. And now for the conclusion, which one of these four sound cards, hope I don't drop them, which one of these four sound cards would I recommend? Well, to start off with these two, the Fossian FX Audio. Now, both of those, I said, will have a well, sort of nicest audio uh, quality to them. Uh, the results from Rightmark Audio Analyzer were, well, they were rather good. But still, I will not recommend them, other than if you have a, well, a headset that has more power than 32 ohms, which is just about what these two, the non-powered headset, can deliver. The Fossi can drive up to 250 ohms, the FX Audio can, oh, I have to lift them up, the FX Audio can drive up to 600 ohms, but I doubt that if you have one of those headsets that you will use one of these two. I mean, there are much more expensive and better brands out there for you to use. So. I will not really recommend these two. Uh, what is one major advantage is this one, the Fossi, which has the both the 3.5 and the 6,35 millimeters for your headphone jack plug. So these two are really nice. This one is the surprise of the day. I'm going to put it down because I'm going to drop them. This one is the, the well, the, the catch of the day. I mean, I really can recommend this one. If you're going on a travel and you want to have some decent quality audio from your laptop, um, this one is the one to have. I mean, I have a laptop from work there and I must say that the audio quality of it is really, ex I'm not even re extremely bad. I mean, it gets louder, it gets noisier and uh, a lot of the sound will get distorted and I really dislike the audio. And this is, well, this is a nice addition to my sound card collection. I, I will continue to use it while going on the road, maybe on work somewhere. This is a nice addition. And then, well, the one that I would recommend, it is this one, of course, the Epos GSX 300. I mean, the sound quality of this one is the best of all three. Um, it, 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 the design is nice and it, it, there are some major advantages of this one over the other three and that is that this one has a microphone plug, something the other three don't have. So those are more for listening to music. This one is more for gaming and it also says so on the box. I mean, it's the, from the gaming series. But I really enjoyed this external sound card. It was uh, also when I uh, reviewed it back in the days. I was really amazed and surprised at about the quality of this one. So, what should you get for Christmas and ask Santa? This one, the Epos Sennheiser GSX 300. Uh, now, well, for the ending, thank you for watching and making it all the way to the end. And, well, I hope to see you in the next one. I don't know when it will be. Uh, online, but I'm already working on it. It will be either about the X5 or the GSX 1200. I'm not really sure. Working on both projects at the same time. And I hope to see you then in the next couple of weeks. See you then. Bye bye.